Log Sprouts Distribution Capoker Palm IE XS Willow EK Sequoia Cedar KE Flower Ginkgo OE Coca KP Mangrove TA Baobab EI Willow Bacacia AE Longfoot Fur OO Sequoia UE Banyan UU Baobab Leaf Cypress UT Palm Birch OE Baobab Myrrh AO Settling down Islanthus First Islanthus on UO Second Islanthus on EO Third Islanthus on TL Fourth Islanthus on IE Fifth Islanthus on AI Settling down Calamities Blake UE Fell L E Fire E A Polyodor E A These are extra good locations, but lock for forest. Beginning this tree fight, Capoca draws Flower Ginkgo AT Palm Birch IP Sequoia Myrt EP Raising a two pine grove UT AT And this will be, I presume, the only a right position grove of the entire tree fight since it is located on the corner opposed to the present color spots good for an eventually Baoba Poplane Ho Axis color scaling. It shirts the way for future unmolested color movements upon the edges of this sector. Now Kepoker notices there is a very easy way to make a four pine grove on PL with only a sequoia palm cypress ring on PA. But also unfortunately, with that action begins a series of tragical slips that will become a grandiose structural error that will sentence the whole Kepoker work to a process of annihilation. Kepoker seemingly doesn't realize how powerful the four colors on edges lines are that the only way to successfully deter Kala's actions in the future would have been to block Kala's for plain hole jumps by making grows precisely on these positions. Instead of that, the forest maker continues to make with relative easiness, even with elegant ingenuity, grows which don't close these edge lines. Like this one pine grove KL made out of coca EK working together with loaded pine UT which draws a mangrove UI and with loaded pine II which draws a leaf baobab cypress AL. As a result, all his elaborated work will prove to be a metaphor of plain incompetence. As shown on the screen, the powerful pollutant fire still has the deadly IO and OA spots at their disposal and ready to jump into. Excess just lies in wait. Meanwhile, Kepoker draws mangrove rim PU and develops a maze out of sequoia from loaded pines PL, PP, and flower fir PK, making a one pine grove on PU. Wonderfully organized, although not precisely effective against impending colors movements. By this time, Kepoker has run out of space for new groves and plenty of transformers in his cartouche to keep on going. So, he puts Banyan Rim on UU in order to get Polluter activated. 
that should have been properly marked with an excess turn, but sorry about that, just overlooked. Anyway, Polluto, together of course with Fire, performed his destructive show that leads to a massive killing of five trees from Grove KL, reduced now to three Ailanthus with its loaded pine. And also we have now a broken grove at AT with two trees killed. Then, implementing Paul Plain Hall Palm, Fire moves away from Pollute's place, going I.O., in order to decimate Fort Pine Grove P.L., eventually in the next happy life, as it still remains connected with Polluto. On Cape Oker turn, now he has room enough to make a one pine grove at A.K. with Baobab E.U and palm acacia PU from loaded pine PU. Unfortunately, a new growth within range of plague and fell blue rage. Let's remember that up to now, no colors has been activated by excess. At this point, excess still rejecting involvement is forcing K Poker to go on using his remaining transformers for building up groves or to organize Sprout's conversion into Ailanthus. Given the scarcity of transformers left to propose a major enterprise, K Poker chooses Ailanthus planting with help from his cartouche and loaded pines. Maze out of Sequoia TE and Cedar TU, then Willow Acacia PL, then Palm OT, and finally a Palm Acacia KL from Loaded Pine KL, together with Willow TE. All this allowing now to settle down eight Alanthuses on TO, UU, TA, EI, OP, OK, OL, and OU. Trying to locate the most suitable spots for Ailanthus means to anticipate excess priorities on Kalas transportations in order to determine spots that could be saved from Kalas rages, combined also with a balanced distribution of those Ailanthus for even more survival chances. Now it's solo colors time. The whole accomplished forest of 57 trees with 8 pines will be severely punished, ruthlessly demolished because of Cape Oker's thoughtless planning. And that will occur mostly by a series of happy lives and some very coherent Poplane Hall progressions. First, excess activates fire producing Blue Rage with Polluter, which of course unleashes its three-phase destruction program, going by Baobab Poplin Ho, Fire to IE, and by Sequoia Poplin Ho, Pollute to OA. Happy life outcomes are complex and time-taking, and these ones also bring about the most excruciating losses to the forest as plurages tear apart each of the grove's structures but UTs. It means that all of a sudden nearly the whole forest ground is full of ailanthus and isolated pines, easy target for next happy life coming up.
Fell comes to life, meaning again plurich with fire connected with pollute, and again happy life destruction, going Fell by willow poplin ho to EL and fire to EI, and by sequoia poplin ho, plague goes to TE and pollute goes OI through baobab poplin ho. Results, 21 trees eliminated. Next is Polluto's turn with again massive killing of elf trees. At the end, Palm Poplain Ho puts plague on OU, gaining a position to eliminate three more trees in its own next turn, which is also the last of this tree fight. <laughs> 